Hello, this is Julia Burkova, and today I'm going to uh, speak about the role of each finger on the bow. As we all know by now, the finger that holds the weight of the bow is only one, and that is the pinky. So when I play on the violin and I go to the frog, and I don't want to get, for instance, a sound uh, like this, then I will use uh, the pinky a little bit just at the moment when I will be changing like right there so about that much of the hair I'm using at that point when I am actually slightly slightly pressing the pinky down thus taking the bow uh, weight a little bit off the string and you hear a much nicer change of the bow um, on the other side of the spectrum is our index finger, or sometimes I call the fingers still like it's one, two, three, and four, just like all them on the left hand and the thumb. Uh, so that's my terminology. So the index or the first finger is uh, works as an opposite force to the pinky, and it is supplying uh, the uh, depth and loudness, uh, richness of the tone towards the tip especially as you keep going to, uh, to the tip from the frog, for instance, here. As you can hear, the sound does not get weaker, uh, and uh, sometimes I can make a crescendo, a real crescendo to the tip as well, using the technique, of course, of pronation, pronating my hand and si so somewhat uh, rotating the arm, forearm, and, of course, engaging my first finger to the point that uh, the bow gets closer to the hair. The stick is closer to the hair. And you probably can see it right there, right? Okay, so that's what happens when I go to the tip. And if I go from the tip, also with the same sound. So that's primarily function of the index finger. However, second finger that primarily has a function of the co-fulcrum with the thumb. Thumb is a real fulcrum, really. Uh, so here we go, and then we, when we ch make bow changes or any um, nice movements that we have to make to make the sound rounder. Uh, so it's thumb, and against the thumb is the second finger. However, the second finger still is capable of producing some of the tone, not as much as the first, of course. It's not in the right place for that, but some. So it does help the first finger in some ways also, uh, to produce the tone, and also it helps a lot in making the um, hand more balanced on the way up the bow. So again, I had my G there, fine. It, it's first finger, but it's also somewhat of the second that keeps helping the first with the same goal. However, the finger that really helps us to regain the correct frog position, comfortable frog position. In other words, not to get stuck in the pronation that we uh, achieved while going, uh, go doing things at the tip, here at the tip. And you see, this is what basically happens. Uh, I don't uh, try to reach with my fourth. I could, but I don't. I let it hang, so it's off. Some uh, violinists you uh, could see have extreme pronation and therefore even a third finger maybe off the stick or barely touching the stick. Uh, so it depends, but uh, in any case, our position of the hand is very different at the tip than it is at the frog. So how do we get from the tip to back to the frog into this comfortable position? Well, the one thing uh, that uh, is the role of the third finger, in my opinion, and that is uh, to make sure that it returns to its place, which is lower, back to lower, on the uh, bow. So this is, if I'm there at the tip, then I'm here at the frog. And the third finger literally moved back down to its frog position. Um, you may uh, do this thinking of your third finger returning, but not pressing. It should never press. So here, right there, so I just make sure that I let it slide back into my frog position. Or you can also think that you are going to make 
this rotation with your thumb, which actually will lead exactly to the same thing for the third finger to do. So this is a pronation, and then slight rotation of the thumb will get your third finger into this nice aligned position. But nevertheless, your third finger has to be, one, relaxed, two, never press, and three, never do anything else for the good sound, really. One and the same thing. Don't engage it in any other way than let it slide from one place to another. To recap one more time, what I have been talking today about belongs to the basic bowings. And basic bowing is the detaché and any type of legata that we use, whole bow and uh, uh, some parts of the bow. We are not talking right now about some exceptions to the rule, because yes, of course, there are exceptions since there are rules. Uh, and in some situations, yes, uh, the fingers will have somewhat different roles, but we are not talking about that today. I hope this video has been helpful. Happy practicing. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have not subscribed, you're losing a lot by not being in the loop of what's happening in the community tab, where I put my weekly quizzes on the violin technique and other interesting things.